This from Dog Pound Daily. Three Browns preparing for their final season in Cleveland. Uh, three, they go with Dustin Hopkins. Set for free agency in 2025. Cleveland will likely look at a younger option, especially if he suffers any more injuries this year. Two, Jedrick Wills. Unless he figures it out, becomes a consistent force at left tackle, he's going to be looking for a new home in 2025. And number one, Elijah Moore. First season with the team wasn't bad at uh, 640 yards, two touchdowns, 59 receptions. Also wasn't much of a difference maker and didn't stretch the field. Averaged 10.8 yards uh, per reception. I, you know what? I don't know that they're going to – I don't know that I know – I don't know that I agree any of those three are done. If Hopkins makes his field goals, he's going to be here for, for as long as, um, as he continues to make his field goals. Jedrick Wills, they don't have a better option right now. I, I think the Browns – Front office likes Jedrick Wills much more than the fan base. And Elijah Moore, he might have been the guy that suffered the most from having four different quarterbacks uh, playing quarterback last year. Yeah, that's interesting about Moore. I, I think you're right. Um, yeah, it's so hard to tell, right? He's only been here a year. Um, I understand where they're coming from. Like, I could see this being his final year. Um, you probably, you know, I don't know. Can you pay... He, him, Judy, and Cooper, I don't know, maybe. Um, if you re-sign Cooper, I think that's probably a bad sign for Elijah Moore sticking around. Um, when they traded for him, I think they envisioned a long-term future. But the fact that they traded for Judy, um, you know, it probably is less that they think Moore is going to be their number one or number two guy, like they might have thought when they traded for him. So I could see him, you know, it depends, right? But I could see this being his final year. Hopkins. Right. If he if he's great and stays healthy, um, there'll be no need to run him out of town. <laughs> you got to hang out of that kicker as long as you can. But he is getting older. His head injury issues. Um, and then Wills. To me, Wills is the one on that page that I disagree with the most. Like you said, there's not a successor on the roster. You know, unless you wanted to make the Dewan Jones move, and then you probably have an opening at right tackle. Um, and, and I think I like Wills more than a lot of people do. I, I think. He could have a future here, and I don't think the Browns want to just give up on a guy they drafted number 10. The, the other thing is it's going to be interesting to see how a new offensive line coach, you know, how, how he responds to and, and, again, I'm not saying anything even remotely that um, Andy Dickerson is better than Bill Callahan. Different coaches reach different players. It's, it's just a fact. And Bill Callahan, I've said it a number of times, I think he's the best offensive line coach in the NFL, but – Maybe a different voice helps Jedrick Wills. Yeah, that's not crazy. They, you know, I, I think Wills might have a different personality than some, maybe than the average offensive lineman. Um, you know, maybe Dickerson has less tough love than Callahan, and Wills will respond to that. Maybe just gets older and more mature and figures out what it takes in this league. Uh, I, I think he's gotten better. I think he was getting better last year um, until the injury. So obviously he's not perfect. Um, he hasn't lived up to the number 10 pick in the draft. I just think it's hard to find left tackles. And I, I know that he is a starting caliber left tackle in this league. So, yeah, maybe he can find one cheaper. Um, maybe he could play as well. But I don't think there's any guarantee of that.